Hello friends, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about my experience journaling for mental health for 30 days. I decided to look a little bit sunny and bright and spring-like in this video because it is currently not like that outside. Yes, it is bright and sunny, but it is currently minus 20 Celsius, which is, I believe, minus 4 Fahrenheit. It's cold out, so I thought I would bring a little springness inside. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I decided to start journaling. I'm going to talk about the supposed benefits of journaling. I'm going to talk about how I got started, and I will tell you my conclusions about what I noticed about journaling every day for 30 days, where it was helpful, where it was not. When I sat down to prepare for this video and I thought, okay, why did I decide to start journaling? The answer at first was, I don't really know. I had decided that in 2021, I wanted to do a number of, um, I don't want to say challenges, more like habit building. And I wanted those to be physical, mental, just around my well-being in general. And around mental health, I always had this idea that journaling daily helps with that. I wouldn't say my mental health is bad. I do tend to get anxious a lot about little things. Uh, anxiety is kind of my go-to emotion for a lot of stuff. I had a lot of emotional stuff happening just at the very end of last year. And the last year has been hard for all of us and difficult on our mental health. Uh, so this was one of the ways I thought that I could improve mine a little. I want to clarify at the start what kind of journaling I am talking about. I am talking about journaling for mental health, not talking about bullet journaling, although I have done that before. Uh, bullet journaling to me is much more, it's often work focused when I've done it, but it is much more about like your daily list of what you need to get done or goal setting. Um, I don't use a bullet journal lately, although I have in the past. I mentioned in one of my previous videos about purchases I made in the last year. I'm currently using my Inspired journal as sort of my personal like to-do list during the day, keeping track of goals. This isn't about any of that. This is purely about bettering my mental health. And what are the benefits of this kind of journaling supposed to be? I mean, I'd always sort of heard it out there that it will help with your mental health. But when I actually went to look into it, I found a really good article and I'm going to read a little bit from it because it's very succinct and I think very clear. And I will also link it down below. This is from the Health Encyclopedia from the University of Rochester Medical Center. The section of the article that is entitled Journaling Benefits says, one of the ways to deal with any overwhelming emotion is to find a healthy way to express yourself. This makes a journal a helpful tool in managing your mental health. Journaling can help you manage anxiety, reduce stress, and cope with depression. Journaling helps control your symptoms and improve your mood by helping you prioritize problems, fears, and concerns, tracking any symptoms day to day so you can recognize triggers and learn better ways to control them, providing an opportunity for positive self-talk and identifying negative thoughts and behavior. When you have a problem and you're stressed, keeping a journal can help you identify what's causing that stress or anxiety. Once you've identified your stressors, you can work on a plan to resolve the problems and reduce your stress. How did I get started with journaling? Well, I started out by finding a cute journal online that I ordered for not too high of a price. This one right here obviously has cute little avocados all over it and it's just a ruled book. Uh, and I also, I had previously purchased this, but I have some really nice uh, gel ink pens that just makes the writing experience nicer. Uh, I will link both of these down below in my Amazon store. For me, and this may be different from anyone, it was very important to actually hand write things out instead of typing. For me, there's a connection that happens when I hand write something. It causes me to think about it more and have more of a memory of putting that down rather than typing. I'm actually a very fast touch typer. I took typing lessons in high school, which at the time was sort of a throwaway class and turns out to be one of the best things I ever took. But it means I can actually type as fast as I can think. So there doesn't tend to be a connection between what I am thinking. Like it's, it's just going through my mind as fast as I can think it. Whereas when I am writing, I have to sort of think through that thought and it gives me time to think what I'm going to write next. It's also the same reason why I can never type up study notes. I have to write them down for it to be retained in my brain. I watched a couple of videos online about journaling for mental health because I literally thought, well, what am I supposed to do exactly? <laughs> what am I supposed to write? What I picked up was a few things. First of all, don't write this like somebody else is going to be reading it. Point form is fine. You don't need to do full sentences. Uh, this is not about perfectionism. I have terrible handwriting. Let me just show you. I can barely even read my own handwriting at times. Editing Melissa here. 
I realized that you couldn't see how terrible my handwriting is, because I also realized that if I was to show you close enough to see my handwriting, that you'd be able to read what I wrote. The first day I sat down to journal, I decided I was going to write one page or write for 15 minutes, basically whichever came first. So I just set a timer and started writing. And I didn't judge myself on what I was writing. I just wrote about what I was feeling, what was in my mind. And at the start, it almost felt like I had to get over a hump on the first day because it was like, well, I need to give all the backstory. And again, you have to remember, this isn't for anybody but you. And for me, I wasn't even planning on going back and reading it again. This was just about the process of thinking through things and writing about how I was feeling or that day. I also decided that this was going to be part of my evening routine. I am... I'm sometimes a morning person, but I found that during quarantine, when I've been working from home, I tend to find that my rhythm is more staying up a little bit later and getting up uh, a little bit later as well, because I don't need to go through the whole getting ready process in quite the same way, or the commuting. So I decided to write in the evening. That also made sense to me because it was more like reflecting on my day, rather than perhaps writing about what happened the day before. Let's talk about what I discovered, both in terms of benefits and maybe some things I still need to iron out. Uh, the first is uh, when I chose to journal, which was the evening, because I did find there were some times when it would get to the end of the night and it was just like one more thing on my to-do list to get my journaling done. And it felt like more of a task rather than something that was something I looked forward to. So I did try to play around with the timing a little bit and I'll get into this a bit more later in one of the benefits, but I did find that for me, what was best, I would write every evening pretty much, but I would also not limit myself to only writing in the evening. If I had something that was on my mind, I would bring up my journal and I tried to keep it out so that it was in eyesight, but I would get my journal and write about what I was feeling in that moment. I mentioned this before, but it was very important to not be a perfectionist about this. No one is going to read it. You don't need to write in a voice like somebody else is going to read this, if that makes sense. I find when I'm writing, I almost think of like a third person re reading it at times, so it's almost like I'm trying to use phrases or explain things like somebody else is going to be reading it. So I had to get over that idea and go, this isn't about anyone else reading it, but also this isn't about me going back and reading it later. I've not gone back and read any of this. It's not about doing that. It's about what my thought process is in the moment. And I do understand that if you're journaling for mental health in a way where you're trying to look more at triggers and outcomes that maybe you do want to go back and reflect. But for me, oftentimes just thinking through that is enough for it to remain in my memory. I don't have to go back to the written version of it. I don't worry about my handwriting. Um, I don't worry about my spelling unless it's really terrible. I'll usually just write over whatever I spelt wrong. Uh, but it really helped to get out of that, as I said, um, mindset of perfection. And also I'm not using it as a time capsule. So it's not like I need to write everything down that happened in my day because I'm gonna go back and read about it later. If something happened, but it wasn't something that I felt any emotions about or didn't feel the need to reflect on, I don't need to write about it, that's totally fine. There were about three days during the month where I missed out on journaling, and those were days that were really hard for me. So it was kind of this catch-22 of the days when it probably would have been best to use it in the evening, because I was having a hard day, I had, you know, felt stress and, Usually it was one of those days where I felt stress and then I had sort of a binge eating episode and then I just wanted to go to bed and not think about it. And so I'm still struggling a little bit with how to make the journal useful in those situations. And I think it is one where I should try to use it earlier. So as I'm going through the process of feeling the stress and deciding to numb that stress with food and unhealthy decisions, that can I get the journaling in there somewhere to help think through the process and come up with a better solution. And now I'm going to tell you about the biggest benefit I found from keeping this journal, and that was 100% managing my anxiety. I live by myself and I have wonderful friends and family that I can talk to when I'm stressed about something, um, but there are times when you are stressed and it's a legitimate stressor and you need to talk through solutions and get advice. And there's times where you're stressed about something and you know that you're stressed unnecessarily, but it's just like you want to get it out of your brain and tell someone, I'm stressed about this dumb thing. And I know that I shouldn't be because of this and this and this and this, but it's still in there bouncing around and I just need to get it out of my head. And for me, 
writing it down and having that conversation with my journal was so beneficial. So let me tell you about a silly version of this. Uh, we are all working from home right now. So at my work, my department, um, we have a series of shared files. And I say this like it's a working from home thing. We've always had this set of shared files that we use to you know, save information that we all need. And in the larger department, we have sort of like subsections and we have our own folders. So within that large you know, list of 30 shared files, I will only use like two of them overall. And our um, like highest manager, my manager's manager, uh, reached out to the team uh, sort of over chat and was like, does anybody know what happened to like this important folder? Uh, it doesn't seem to be there anymore. Did anybody accidentally move it? And this is not a folder that I ever use, that I would never be near in the shared drive, uh, would have no reason to be in there or moving it around. And that never happened as far as I remembered. I never got any notification that I was moving anything or deleting anything. And uh, he sort of said, you know, someone asked him like a day later, did you ever figure it out? And he said, no, I have to go to IT and ask them to like reinstall, um, you know, a backup of this file. Spoiler alert here, it was not me that did it, but somehow for like a day, I was like, oh my God, maybe I was the one who deleted this like super important file folder and they're going to go to IT and somehow IT is going to know that it was like me as the user who did it and it's going to be this whole thing. And, uh, and I know like if I say that out loud, I know that is ridiculous, but it was still something that was in my head because I just get anxious about so many things. So I was able to go to my journal, write down like I'm feeling anxious about this. And I know that it's not me that did it because of this and this and this and this reason. And yet it's still somewhere in my head. So I just need to say this because I know I should not be anxious about this. And so I've put it out there. I'm done moving on with my day. That is what this is perfect for. Another example, and this may sound strange because I'm here in Canada, but on the day of the Capitol riots, I found myself incredibly anxious and stressed watching what was going on. And I mean, you guys are our neighbors and what you guys do impacts us a lot up here in Canada. I don't know if any of you have heard the expression about the elephant and the mouse. The US is like the elephant and we're like the mouse. So if you're in bed with the elephant, every little move the elephant makes stresses out the mouse, like has a huge impact. That's what it feels like sometimes being in Canada next to the US. So even though it didn't have anything to do with us, it was super stressful. And I went midday to my journal and I wrote down like just flow of like everything that was going through my head about how crazy this was and just all that kind of stuff. And I just blurted it out there because it was just something I had to get out of my head and express how I was feeling. And circling back to my earlier point about having the journal available all the time and not restricting myself to only writing in the evening is that was when it was most beneficial, when I was having those loops and you know spiraling thoughts. I'd be like, no, I'm gonna go write this down. I'm gonna write down either the solution or why I am just spinning out unnecessarily about this or what my feelings are and then I could be done with it and move on with my day. And that is where it was most helpful. And I'll also mention just the biggest drawback that I found from it, which I found kind of interesting. Because I was journaling in the evening, sometimes I would try to go back and talk about emotions that I was feeling during the day. And I've had times where I've felt, you know, sadness about something, um, where there wasn't a solution to it. It's just, you know, something that happened and the waves of feelings will come back to me where I feel sad about it and I want to write that down. But what happened a couple of times was that I was sort of reflecting on my day and was feeling fine when I sat down to journal and then I was reflecting on that sadness and the reasons that led me to that and my thoughts and it would bring me down a little bit again. So again, I feel like part of the solution to that is using the journal through the day when I'm having those feelings but I also decided just in the last week or so to try to end my journaling each day on a positive note. A lot of people talk about journaling about gratitude. For some reason, the word gratitude just doesn't resonate with me. I'm not sure why that is. I'm very grateful for a lot of things in my life, but expressing it in that way just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't really matter why, but I came up with three things that I wanted to write about at the end of each day that would end it on a positive note. And they were things that made me happy during the day. And this could be everything from, you know, 
it makes me so happy that I get to talk to my friends. It makes me so happy that I have these awesome friends who are there when I need them. And I know most people would express that as gratitude. For me, the word happy expresses that better for me. So it can be everything from that to I am happy that I found another show to binge watch that I'm enjoying. Just lists of big and small things that made me happy. The next thing I would write about as much as possible is something that made me proud of myself. And interestingly, this led me to start to realize that I tend to downplay my accomplishments. So I just two days ago, and I believe this will be next week's video, finished a strength training program start to finish, first time in my life I've ever done that. And I sat down to write in my journal how proud I was. And I almost wanted to go, well, except, you know, I did this and this and this and except this happened. So it's almost like I want to downplay it. So it's a pattern I'm recognizing and I'm trying to get better at saying what I'm proud of myself about. And then the third thing I try to do is write about something that I'm looking forward to. Again, big or small, whatever it is. So I'm ending thinking about happiness, things I'm proud of about myself and things I'm looking forward to. And right now with everything going on in the world, it can help to have little things to look forward to because it's hard to know when we can look forward to big things. So in conclusion, I think this is a good tool. I would suggest if you want to use it as I have done to manage anxiety and bring a little bit more positivity into your life, that you do keep a journal with you through the day. For me, this one works because I'm at home all the time right now, um, but something more compact that is you're able to take with you is probably a good thing if you are out and about more in the world or you have a job where you do need to go into it because I do think having something you can pull out and just write a paragraph or a few point form notes when something comes up during the day is super super helpful. There's also just no drawback to giving this a try. Get yourself a cheap little journal and just give it a go for 30 days and see how it does. Don't be a perfectionist about it. Don't write like somebody else is going to read it. It's a very low risk thing to try out to see if it helps you in any way with your mental health. So that is my video about my experience journaling for mental health for 30 days. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to follow me on this journey of trying different habits and challenges for my mental health, my physical health, and my general well-being, please consider subscribing to my channel and also liking this video, which is also super helpful for me. Uh, if you are somebody who journals, if you do it in a different way, if you have suggestions for me on how to maybe build it better into my evening routine, uh, leave all of that in the comments down below. I do love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!